Hello, Bluetube. It's the one and only Icebound Glaceon. And, um, don't mind my avatar being in the bottom right. Okay, so, um, this is a quick tutorial on how to use the Pokemon Battle Sim. Uh, this was made a little bit ago. It was a project by Bees Knees and I, Mr. Bees Knees. Um, he did all the animations and the original logic. Uh, we also had a, another creator create the stadium. Um, well, he made the stadium. We asked for permission to, you know, put all of our uh, stuff inside of it. Um, I took it upon myself to redo all the logic since um, the original method was a little outdated and a little clunky. And I wanted to make it all modular, so I ended up, you know, redoing it all in binary. Um... I'm sorry if the video quality isn't uh, pristine. Um, I'm currently using <coughs> VR Chat to uh, display my avatar, which probably isn't the best idea. Um, but yeah, in this video, I will both show how to use the stadium and how to make your own modules, since that is uh, mentioned inside of the. Um, of course, someone joins. <sighs> Give me a second. Okay. Um, so yeah, so first of all, for the stadium, you can spawn in any of the two current modules. There will be you know, more added later on. So we have both the red battle set and the yellow battle set. Oh, and now I'm lagging because someone joined my session in VR chat. I probably should have put it to invite plus. That's my own fault. Whatever. Um, yeah. Okay, so you can use any of the... Uh, any combination of these modules, so like I can mix in, you know, two Pikachu's or two Charmanders, right? Or I could do, you know, a Squirtle and a Eevee, right? It doesn't matter, right? So what I could do is I could just lift up the stadium. Uh, I made it so you can put on a lift. You can grab any point on the actual platform itself. You can line it up with, you know, the rails on here. You'll notice that in the corners it fits in snugly. Um, there's also quite a bit of room in here as well, um, just, you know, just in case you needed extra room. Uh, you could take the other platform, again, grab it anywhere, and also just weld it in anywhere. Um, all the Pokemon stats and, um, you know, the, their stats, their moves, the animations will all automatically be loaded into the mechanism, since it is done with a QR code on the side here. I will also show um, what each of them does. Obviously, you know, even though I have VR chat running and my uh, scrap mechanic running and I'm recording, I'm still not getting any lag with this creation at all. But still recommended to have it on a lift just in case. And um, yeah, so you notice the health bar is full. Uh, obviously, when both Pokemon are down, it is in the reset state, so all the Pokemon are healed. Um, to send out your Pokemon, you just click the switch pops out the Pokemon, and you do so for the other player as well. Obviously this is meant to be a two-player game, but can be played solo. I guess it would be more fun uh, in, with two people. Um, the actual uh, battle simulator will determine who gets to go first once both moves are selected, and it will calculate that based off of, uh, you know, their speed stats. So on each platform over here, let me just go into the mechanism here. Uh, oh, I had it labeled on this one over here. Ah, whatever. Okay, so we have our HP stat here, right? So this loads in uh, a max HP in a sense. So the value starts off at full, right? And this will subtract from that full HP bar. Um, the HP currently is kind of a combination between their defensive values and HP values. In Pokemon, your defense is worth more than your HP. So I've kind of calculated it a little bit differently based off of that. Um, you could just put whatever values you want in all honesty. but um, And as for speed, I'm just basically taking their, their stats from Cerebi and dividing it by 4 or 5 and just putting that as their speed value. So, yeah. Or by, well, let's see, I, I don't remember what this one's going by. Uh, it goes from uh, bottom to top on this one. So like this one's subtracting uh, three. So you have uh, two and one, so it has three. 
So this guy would have, uh, what, 30, no, 28 HP, 28 or 29 HP. So I believe this is the Squirtle. No, this is Eevee. Yeah. And again, that's in conjunction with his defenses as well. And then you have the speed stat. So this one would be six, seven, six. Yeah, it'd be six, right? Because you have two and four is six, right? And so his speed would be 6, and the Squirtle's speed would be... Ah, there you go. Yeah, it's only 4. And his HP is apparently the same. So I, I believe Eevee has more HP but less defense, but Squirtle has more defense and less HP. Obviously, the Pokemon over here have different values for their... Uh, for this. Uh, yeah, so um, Pikachu's speed is 9. His uh, HP is reduced a hell of a lot more. So he has, what is it, um, 8 and then another 3, so he has 11 taken off the top. And the Charmander has less taken off the top. It's only 9 taken off the top for his HP. But he's also only at uh, 7 speed. So he's faster than the Eevee, but none of them are faster than the Pikachu. I've also nerfed the Pikachu a little bit. Um... These are damage values here. Um, unfortunately, the, the Pikachu was doing a little bit too much damage since everyone's a first stage book. Well, this guy's technically second stage. Um, yeah, so I had to nerf his damage a little bit because he was doing a little bit too much. Uh, he was able to two-shot uh, two the Charmander with Electro Ball. So I, I reduced the damage just a little bit, just so you could at least last two turns. And since he was always going first, since he was faster, it was just unfair. Um, but as for the moves themselves, they go horizontally. Right? So you have your um, status slot at the top. Uh, that's a placeholder for now until the new system is implemented in version 2. Um, that also goes into animation slot 1 here. So you have animation slot 1 here, and that goes into this top bar here. Right? And this gets loaded from, uh, from this side, left to right as damage values, right? And then you have this one here being, you know, the one the next one down. And obviously, um, when you select the move up there, it will grab the value from here and apply it to a damage calculator and apply that onto the opponent's HP. And all that is done inside of here all automatically, which is quite nice. So as I said, it grabs the value from the horizontal thing, puts it into the damage calculator, the move is selected based off of the move selector, and that is applied to the um, the opponent's HP over here. So uh, it gets sent into the uh, turn selector and then put into the HP apparently. It also gets sent into the um, animation controller. So these are animation controllers over here. Um, they're set to a, a yeah a decently lowered speed, un unfortunately. But um, the reason they're done that way is so that the um, the move actually doesn't glitch out and go through the floor. It can lock the move, which is uh, oversight on my part, I guess. I don't know. Um, the easiest way to fix that is to either just put on the lift again or just deleting the, the, the ground below this side here. You can just delete the strip if it ever gets stuck. Um, but yeah, so um, whenever you select a move and the animation is played on the, um, on the turn selector, right? the uh, you know, respective move will trigger the animation over here and that's plugged into the platform which goes into animation controller. So that literally gets plugged in from the stadium to here to there. Um, each move has, you know, you, you leave an extra controller slot in here to be able to interact with the doors. So you have, whenever, whenever you have an animation playing, you want to be able to activate the door on the other side. So you just, you know, fine tune the selection on here and obviously when you want to receive an animation from the other side it gets inputted through this side over here so this side will tell you know the other side to you when, when to open its door and this one is telling your side when to open the door and that's literally just inputted directly into this logic gate and opens and closes the door and um, we had to do it on a logic gate instead of a controller because it was a little unreliable unfortunately yeah, as for the actual stadium itself, as I mentioned before, it's it's literally just plug and play. Um, you know, I, I select a move, 
Uh, make sure not to do one tick pulses. It's still, you know, on this version, it still doesn't work with one tick pulses. I'm tempted to put in a pulse extender, but there's some kinks I still have to work out. But yeah, um, each turn, I believe, is lasts uh, about nine seconds. So yeah, the animations are played. Um, obviously, as soon as the move is selected, it does its damage. Yeah, so... Oh, I guess the Eevee is bugged right now. He's not actually taking damage. Oh, wait. Did I... Okay, I know what it is. Um, I When I was getting this ready for the video, I changed a few colors. Um, here, let me, let me quickly reset it here. I, again, to reset, all you have to do is call both Pokemon down. Yeah, th this... This this isn't the stadium's fault. Uh, I'm just gonna call that Pokemon down. Call this Pokemon down. Uh, Pokemon both Pokemon will be fully healed, and it's it's reset back to a default state, which is nice. Um, yeah. So what I accidentally did. Um, this isn't on the final product. The reason that this one's black is because this is a color sensor. So that that's why that specific block is black. I, I know in uh, Scrapman's video, he's like, oh, I'm just gonna grab it by that block. No, no that's that's literally to tell the stadium that. There is a actual Pokemon inside the stadium. Uh, it kind of locks the stadium state if there's nothing inside of it. So there's no calculations done, no HP values, um, no random, um, say, leg issues will break the stadium if there's no Pokemon inside. And if there is a Pokemon inside, it will reset it as soon as it's put on a lift. So now when I pull the Pokemon out, yeah, now it's HP value set correctly. Yeah. So that that's all that was. That was that was just me. I was I was color coding the platform so I could explain easier on how to adjust it. Again, that's not on the final one. Oh, I went to pulsed it because I'm a dumb. That that's why that fired. Whatever. Which means this guy's automatically gonna get to go after. He was faster anyways, but that that's because I went to pulsed it. Uh, again, I will put a pulse extender on that later on. So let's see if I select this one. And I select this one. Yeah. So, yeah, now it goes based off of uh, turn selection because I didn't accidentally hit it too fast. Uh, again, we have the animations delayed a little bit because, it, unfortunately, some animations are longer than others and it can break. So I have the global turn, collide, uh, turn selector have its own timer right here. And that's set to 10 seconds plus some other things. So it's, it's about, like... Um, 10 point like two seconds or something dumb like that. But yeah, um, as soon as a Pokemon runs out of HP, it uh, it ends up getting returned back to the stadium. So doink, yeah, that's whatever. And then the Squirtle will go because it's slower. Again, different animations take with different lengths. Ah, there you go. Oh, and the the EB actually fainted. So his HP ran out. Um, obviously, it's showing in a fainted state. So if I, you know, uncheck it there, right, it's gonna keep it in the bottom. And if I, you know, return my Pokemon, it's gonna heal both Pokemon up and reset the stadium. So if I want to, at this point, put in different Pokemon, I could um, cut out the colored part, right? For either, you know, whichever one I want to remove or both, and you literally just cut out the colored part. So from like hey, there to there, and then you delete this. Hey, Neko, I'm currently recording a video. Sorry, I, I won't oh, be too hey. much longer. Uh, I'm just using this world to display my avatar with, uh, y you know, the whole VTuber thing. I probably should have put to Invite Plus, but you know how I don't like being in private worlds in VR chat anymore. Rar. Um, but yeah, so that that's how the uh, the stadium works. Um, and for the actual animations and stuff, uh, as I previ previously mentioned, the uh, the moves are animated ba based off these animation controllers. Um, essentially all it is is the stadium will trigger the sensor here. It will get put into a timer. So this will be the timer for each move. So you have a different amount of time per animation. Um, each of the controllers are set on loop, so you really have to tinker with this value. Uh, this just allows the animation to be played over and over again multiple times without it breaking. Otherwise, if you don't have it on loop, it will have to um, undo the move when it's finished animating. So it'll have to go in the reverse order, and you don't want that. You want to play from the beginning again. 
So that, that's why they're on loop and why you need the, the timers. So basically it initiates one tick pulse, locks it for a certain period of time, and then you know undoes it. Um, that, that's a pretty simple one tick pulse uh, pulse lengthener. Or pulse extender? Pulse extender, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then those are put into, well, uh, if you need, say, multiple animations going off of this same control, you can have that going into a separate logic gate, which is what this one is here. Uh, not all the Pokemon have it, but some of them do. Like, say, if a Pokemon has, I don't know, like Scratch, right? And you want the Pokemon to go forward with the Scratch, you can actually combine the uh, Tackle animation with, you know, the Scratching animation, so both trigger at the same time. And you just do that with an extra logic gate. And you just, you know, wired a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, uh, as I said, all these just go into the, the Pokemon stuff itself. Uh, usually the first controller is for the actual Pokemon itself to tell the Pokemon when to go out. Um, the one after it is usually Tackle, by default on these current ones. And you have your, like, your Bite or Electro Ball or uh, Iron Tail on this one. Um, but yeah, um... If this does get popular enough, Bees Knees and I will be making more, but I, I had a, you know, a comment or two on the actual, uh, you know, I'll just go to the Steam. I had a comment or two being like, can you make more packs? Um, is there a tutorial on making packs? Could you make a video on, you know, how to use it? But yeah, um, that's kind of what this video is for, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that, that should be the basics. Uh, the stadium, as I said, the only... Uh, required colors on here are that these are in light gray for the binary inputs of the attack values and the uh, speed and HP stat and then this block does have to be black otherwise the stadium won't recognize the Pokemon and it will just think that oh there's nothing actually inside the Pokemon even though it can read these values here I, I probably could just output it if any of these are true instead of having this block black but it's one extra sensor compared to one extra logic gate, so it's kind of whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys want any further, um, I don't know, help with this creation, I can do more tutorials. Just comment down below. Um, if you guys have your own pack submitted, um, make sure you comment when you make a pack on the uh, on the actual page for the the creation itself. Um, again, you have to not only cite the original creation, so required items would be, you know, the, or the stadium, but also just say, you know, this is made for, you know, the, the battle stadium made by, you know, Icebound Glaceon. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all I require. Um, I, I would, you know, love if people ended up making packs and stuff for this, this little mini game. Um, if you want to see uh, the building process, a lot of it was streamed on the channel linked to this video. So if you just hit the little YouTube icon in the bottom right and or go to the, the link to YouTube on my Steam page. Um, yeah, that there are, you know, as I said, this, this project pretty much took a year. So uh, with all the refinements and uh, tools I learned with, you know, logic gates and stuff, uh, I had to redo a lot of it multiple times and it just got better improved over and over again so and then the animations took a while as well but you know we're just on and off working on it you know went like, probably like a day or two once a season but yeah uh, if you guys like the video hit that like button if you disliked it why are you still watching there's so many youtubers that do this kind of stuff better and we'll see you guys in the next video bye right oh and uh, shout out to bees knees he was fucking awesome for making the original and doing the animations. I know it's quite tedious to do animations.